Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode nine of the Tick Bootcamp podcast. Uh, the title of today's podcast, uh, number nine, is Tick Trip. So, Matthew, today we are going to send my tick uh, for a trip. Uh, and why don't you, uh, actually, I think before we, we start talking about the trip, uh, we should talk a little bit about the CDC and the CDC's recommendations. So, recently I went on the CDC website, Matt, and, and I actually had them send me uh, all the materials that they offer to the public. And I actually have the box here, and opening up the box, and inside the box is a, um, is a copy of the Center for Disease Control's uh, description of materials that they've sent me. Um, they sent me 100 tick. Uh, prevent tick-borne disease uh, bookmarks, and they sent me five Rocky Mountain spotted fever signs and symptoms. And uh, what, one of the things that I noticed when I went up to the CDC site for uh, uh, for what materials I had available, and we'll do another podcast on the materials that we just unboxed uh, and what we like and what we don't like. But I noticed that the CDC had a section on tick testing. So I, uh, I, I logged on to that, which I'm doing now, and the CDC has a, a, a post that says, uh, people who have removed, t- removed tech sometimes wonder if they should have it tested for evidence of infection. Although some commercial groups offer testing, in general, this is not recommended because, one, laboratories that conduct tick testing are not required to have a high standard of quality control used by uh, clinical diagnostic laboratories. Results of tick testing should uh, not be used for treatment decisions. Two, positive results showing that the tick contains a disease-causing organism do not necessarily mean that you have been affected. Three, negative results can lead to false assurance. You may uh, have been unknowingly bitten by a different tick that was infected. And four, if you have been infected, you probably develop symptoms before results of the tick test are available. If you do become ill, you should not wait for tick testing results before beginning appropriate treatment. However, you may want to learn about various uh, ticks. Different ticks live in different parts of the country and transmit different diseases. So, Matthew, um, what do you think about the CDC's uh, recommendations regarding tick testing? It is completely wrong. We have done our research. We've looked at various tick testing organizations, and there are some really good ones can run tests of the DNA of the tick to identify common pathogens, which are, you know, disease-carrying bacteria uh, that, that are in the ticks. So, for example, there's uh, a company we reached out to in New Jersey who does a really great job at looking for all of the common tick illnesses that, that humans can get, and they actually run a DNA test on these ticks to identify if the tick has those diseases and what your risk is as a human being bitten by that tick. So, Matt, I, I, what I think is most interesting about this uh, recommendation is it seems to be in line with the behavior that I witnessed from my doctor's office when I brought my tick in. I um, uh, Just uh, to remind our listeners, because we've had a lot of podcasts in between uh, our origin story and now, uh, I was bitten by a tick. Uh, I called you after I was bitten by the tick because I was anxious about um, getting Lyme disease. And your recommendation was that I bag the tick, which I did, bring the tick with me to, the doc- to a doctor's appointment, which I did. And I showed the doctor the tick, and uh, he handed it back to me, and then I handed it back to him again, and he handed it back to me. And uh, the, only, the only thing he said was that it was interesting that my tick had a white spot on its back. The doctor said nothing about uh, nothing about the um, the uh, species of the tick. The doctor said nothing about the gender of the tick. The doctor said nothing about the length of time the tick had been had been um, had been biting me. Uh, and uh, he he put me on a uh, he put me on a protocol um, you know on a uh, on a treatment protocol that included doxycycline. He also uh, had me come back and he had me do a line test several weeks later. So when we began our journey and we did our Tick Pick um, uh, podcast, what we uh, did is we sent a picture of the tick to the uh, Tick Encounter folks at the University of Rhode Island. They sent us back a wonderful report, which uh, shared some interesting information with us. Uh, And Matthew, I don't know if you have a copy of the report available? Uh, I can pull one up. So yep, they came back basically telling you that it was a a uh, male, I think it was a a female Lone Star Tick and that the risk was the Ericlia uh, virus as well as a, um, the risk of the meat allergy that, that people know as the alpha-gal allergy and no risk of Lyme disease, which you were treated for, right? I find the, I find the CDC recommendation odd, certainly consistent with the pattern of behavior that we saw from, from my medical providers, but odd nonetheless because 
I think what we're starting to learn from all the folks that we're interviewing who have gone on these various um, tick disease journeys and have had their Lyme disease journeys is that if they had early inter inter information and they engaged in early intervention uh, steps, they would not have gotten uh, this chronic disease that so many of these people have. Yet the tools in which are available they are. are not tools that are that are being recommended uh, That's that right. they use. So I, you know, so my my doctor did not uh, did not uh, know what species of tick I was bitten by. Did not know what my risk of Lyme disease was. Treated me uh, for Lyme disease. Tested me for Lyme disease. And had he um, had he information that was easily available to him from the University of Rhode Island, he would have known that, uh, that the Lyme disease test was unnecessary and the treatment protocol would have been different. So it is important that we empower ourselves with this information, and if we empower ourselves with this information, we are, uh, we are more likely to make wise decisions because it really does seem like we're on our own when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, tick-borne diseases, right? Tick-borne diseases. So, so, Rich, one other thing that I just know, noticed was I did a quick Google search while you were talking um, for for tick testing facilities, and 17 hours ago, this article was posted by ABC News that a Pennsylvania lab offers free tick testing. So, the East Stroudsburg University uh, now has a tick research lab and is offering free tick testing. It not only tests for Lyme disease, but it also tests for other common infections which cause disease in humans, such as uh, babesiosis, anaplasmosis, as well as the Pallison virus, which is actually a really serious virus that causes swelling of the brain. So these, these facilities exist. And death. And death, right. So these facilities exist. If you live in Pennsylvania, this is a free resource that has no cost to the residents of Pennsylvania. And it's something everybody should do, I think, in my, because it, it gives them information they wouldn't have had without sending this away for, for testing their tick. So, Bill, I, you know, what I find most bizarre about the CDC recommendations is they're almost recommending that ignorance is better than having information that you know that we will not be making wise treatment decisions and uh, diagnostic decisions with 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 more information, which is bizarre to me. It's just yes. a bizarre set of recommendations, and I don't know why they would be making such a recommendation. I guess they don't think we're smart enough to um, to uh, make reasonable decisions based on the information that we have, or right. we are not emotionally stable enough to make wise decisions when we get this information. Really, what we should be doing is waiting to get sick, waiting until we get chronically yeah. sick, and then they'll tell us we don't have uh, a chronic illness. That's right, and, and now you're sick for life. I mean, that, that's really, it's really sad. And so from, you know, we, we did a lot of analysis of, of, of uh, different tick testing facilities. So we looked at you know, places like Tick Report, Igenix Labs, uh, Global Lyme Alliance had, had a listing of many different test, uh, tick testing facilities on their website. Tick Encounter over at uh, University of Rhode Island for the Tick Spotter program partnered with another another lab to do tick testing as well. But one that really that really popped out for us was Ticknetics, who actually does the DNA testing on the ticks. So we still have your tick, and we're going to send it out probably first thing Monday morning after this podcast. So Matt, one of the reasons why I want to gather this information despite the CDC recommendations, and I don't want to beat that to death. But the reason I want to gather this information is one of the uh, lessons that I've learned over the course of the last couple of weeks with the podcast that we've done is that Lyme disease and other tick diseases are opportunistic diseases. We had, we had several people tell us that they believe that the, the, the time between bite and sickness was in some cases many years. Right. Uh, Dr. Fox today, who's one of the top Lyme educators in the country, believes that she was bitten many, many years before she was diagnosed with, with a tick disease. So my position is that I want as much information as possible, and I want to record this information so that if I begin to show signs of, uh, of an illness, that I have a now history of information that I can share with my healthcare providers and I can make, some, I can make decisions. Because the, it is a mistake to believe that you're going to get sick immediately. These are opportunistic diseases. These are diseases that in many cases our immune system is managing until our immune system cannot manage it. And, and because there's a long temporal gap between the time that we've been bitten and the time that we get sick, in many cases we're not, we're not connecting our, our tick diseases to our diagnostic um, tools. That's right. It's so important to have this information because it could be years later, like in, in Dr. Fox's case uh, from this morning. So by building this information, by having the report back from Tick Encounter, which is that free report based on the photo, by sending away the tick to a good lab like Ticknetics out in New Jersey, 
you're going to have that report back as to what diseases were, you know, carried by your tick. And if you do get sick three years down the road, and it is possibly a tick disease, you have a lot of information to bring with you to your doctor to make an informed decision based on what your treatment protocol should be to get better. So it's absolutely something we encourage all of our listeners to consider at the very least. Uh, and, and we're going to be sending away your tick as we noted, and we really think this is something that we need to stress to people. There are tools available, and they should really take advantage of these tools if they find a tick and they happen to remove it send it away, get it tested. It's, it's a, at a very small rate through third parties like Technetics. And if you live in Pennsylvania, you can even get it done for free. So Matt, there's, there's just a, a great deal of information that's now going to be available to me. I, because of the University of Rhode Island and their free report, I discovered the type of tick that um, I, was, I was bitten by, the gender of that tick, and the amount of time that tick was feeding on me, which of course is significant because the length of time a tick is feeding on you is going to have an impact on whether or not it can, it can spit uh, various diseases and, uh, and or uh, causes to have an allergic reaction. So I have that information now that I did not have when I went uh, to work with my, with my doctor's office. Now I'm going to be able to determine exactly what types of, of um, uh, bacteria, bacteria and, and viruses and pathogens that are in the particular tick that had bitten me, and I can combine that information with the information that I received from the University of Rhode Island, and I'm going to be able to do that for less than $110. Of course, Matt, one of the, one of the main reasons that we decided that we were going to do this podcast is because although there was a lot of information about ticks, and although there was a lot of information about tick diseases on the internet and other places, there was very little actionable information. And what we want to do is we want to develop actionable information for folks so that they can very quickly decide what steps they should take in order to be able to protect themselves and their families from tick diseases. That's right. So folks, I, I want to thank you again for listening to our podcast. I'm Rich Johannesson. I'm Matt Sabatello. And this is Tick Bootcamp.